think when guys don't try to do too much, you know, you just honestly try to pass it the baton on to the next guy. You know, I, I think the bats were were great up, up and down the lineup. Um, you know, tonight, and you know, we're getting guys over, getting guys in, and you know, that's what it's 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 you know going to take to beat a really really good team like that, and you know to to play deep into October. Justin, do you hear that? Do you hear that? That that's called positivity. It's been a while since we had some positivity from the Blue Jays. What, two weeks, three weeks, maybe? It's been a rough 15 games or so, 15, yeah, two weeks or so, a little bit over two weeks for the Blue Jays. It's good to hear them, right? You know, 21 winners. Everything's great once again in Blue Jays land. Um, Let's bring our new guest now, Um, a guy I know very, very well. Now, usually he's asking me questions uh, about soccer. Um, Never did we think (laughs) I'd be asking him questions about baseball. It is Sportsnet's Ben Ennis. Ben, how you doing, mate? I'm doing all right. Yeah. And of course I had to say yes when you asked me. I mean, how many now we're like, I'm finally on the ledger. I've asked you a hundred times and now you've asked me once. So yeah, I'm working my way back up to to level with you. You might regret that because uh, we're often needing people and uh, it could be a daily occurrence, mate. Um, Listen, the the Jays, Mm -hmm. Um, you've covered the Jays for a long time, 20 to one winners last night, but it's not really 20 to 1, right? It's, it's 10 to 1. I mean, we, we can't give them credit for beating up on, on position players throwing baseballs, can we really? No, it's uh, it's kind of an embarrassment. Honestly, like, I, and there are new rules this year in which uh, you, you just can't – in years previous, you could just use a position player whenever you wanted. If you knew you were going to lose the game, you could, like, start a position player. Nobody ever did that. But, like, we've, we've seen position players – throw five innings or, or close to it in a nine inning game. There are now rules, right? You have to be, I think it's, it's a 10 run deficit and you can only start bringing them in, in, in the eighth inning. But even that's kind of embarrassing. Like, I don't, wh- why do we allow that? Yeah. It's not baseball. There are enough pitchers to cover it. I mean, you only do it to save relievers, but there are physically human beings who are trained professionals at throwing baseball uh, baseballs that can cover those innings like I understand why at some points it is necessary and the Blue Jays have had to do it in the past but I recall I think it was like it was a Canada Day game against Cleveland years ago where Ryan Goins and Darwin Barney both got into the game as pitchers because that game went like 18 innings so yeah there are there are times when when you should be allowed to do it I in an in a even a 10 run game in the eighth inning against your division rival in May when everybody's fully rested now it's an embarrassment now, Ben, everybody's all on the 20 runs, and but it's an astonishing feat, like you said, did mention. But I want to talk about Jose Barrios. Another very strong performance. He did have some run support this time. But what did you make of Barrios' seven-inning performance last night in the Trop? Yeah, I mean, his numbers overall have just been just miles better this season. We knew this was in him, right? It was – last year was so such an outlier for a guy who was acquired basically – not, not. I mean, the hope was that he could be a top of the rotation starter, but the the baseline was a consistent guy who can take the ball every fifth day, and he did that last year. I mean, that's the other thing. He's never spent a day on the injured list in his entire career, so his best ability is his availability, as they say. But yeah, no, his whole career had been consistent. A guy that end of the year you could basically pencil him in for around a four ERA, somebody that would give you a chance to win, and when you have a top five offense in all of baseball. He's going to win more often than not. The weird thing about last season, though, too, was that he actually was tied for the team lead in quality starts with Kevin Gossman. But when he was bad, he was abysmal. And we've just seen fewer of that this season. You really look at the Blue Jays rotation. Well, one, they've all been really healthy. And look around baseball at all the the rotation injuries that the teams have suffered this season. So that's been a bonus. But they've gotten, I mean, outside of Alec Manoa, who seems to, you know, maybe have found himself with Danny Jansen's last time out. They've all kind of found their level for for the most part. It's been the offense that's been the the big question the last week plus against the Yankees, Orioles, and then the first game against the Rays. If 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 the offense starts figuring it out and the rotation stays healthy, this this team is primed to go on a on a serious run right now. It's a great point though, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. Barrios really good outing yesterday, but but lost in that was of course the offense, right? Which is just uh, outstanding twenty runs as mentioned a thousand times already. Um, but out of all that happened yesterday, forget about the the fake pitches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> um, what was your biggest takeaway? I mean, obviously we knew at some point that the guns would come blasting again, and they did finally. Uh, but what was the biggest takeaway for you, Ben? That the offense, well, okay, and not scored 20 runs, but scored 10 and then hit, you know, came up with massive hits with runners in scoring position. Mm-hmm. And guess, get this. I mean, as as 
mediocre as some people view the offense this season. And certainly, like I said, the last seven, eight days have been bad. They lead all of baseball in hits and they haven't played the most games. They've played 49 games. There's teams that have played 50, 51 with that performance yesterday. The Blue Jays have the most hits in major league baseball. And I, I know you played the George Springer clip about going the other way and that's all well and good. The Blue Jays have had plenty of hits, honestly, even during this fallow time, as far as offense, they just haven't come with runners in scoring position, which is something that I attribute more to luck than, than any type of skill. What I'm, I'm still waiting to see is the power stroke, which we started to see yesterday. I mean, Vlad struck out once uh, uh, against a position player, but then he got a second opportunity, hit a grand slam. I kind of viewed that as, you know, when a guy in a, in a basketball game is going through a, a struggle phase shooting the ball and then gets fouled and then gets to the free throw line and he, he you just see the ball go through the hoop. I wonder if, if, if Vlad teeing off on a position player for a home run in the fashion that he did yesterday, whether that's going to, to, to turn something in his brain that he's going to refine his power stroke because notably this guy does not have a home run uh, at home this season. This is a guy that they're counting on to be one of their major run producers. To me, it's yes, it's the, it, it's the runs before they've brought in non pitchers, but it's also the potential of, of maybe those last couple of innings being a, a launching point for some of their power hitters. Now let's let's build on that, Ben. The offensive explosion is that a sign of things have changed, or just a blimp in the radar for this team? Like, how much stock can you put in a win like this uh, from the Toronto Blue Jays moving forward? Well, like I said, like yeah, they're they're not. I I I have to check, but I don't think the Rays are starting a position player today. And I think it would be it would be rough if they ended up in a position in consecutive days where they had multiple position players. Pitching, in fact, uh, they have the maybe the best pitcher in, in baseball going today in, in Shane McClanahan. So, I mean, kind of good that you got a series. You got a win in the series yesterday before you have to face a guy who I think is 7-0 and uh, on the season this, uh, this year. But um, I, I would say the biggest indicator that the offense might be turning the corner is that they're just starting to hit with runners in scoring position, which they did yesterday. I think they were over 500 yesterday with runners in scoring position. But like I said, they were – they were so awful with runners in scoring position before that, and and I that's not a repeatable skill. It's not like some guys are better at hitting with runners in scoring position than other guys. It's just you're either a good hitter or you're not a good hitter, and generally by the end of the year, your, your averages with runners in scoring position are going to be pretty similar to your averages overall. I think maybe we're starting to see some positive reg uh, regression for this Blue Jays offense that, yeah, the, the, the clutch hits are going to start to come. And you know what's crazy, too? I, I just tweeted it out. By the way, you can follow me on Twitter. It's Forcenet Ben. But I just tweeted <laughs> out the comparable numbers at this point of the season through 49 games offensively. So this year to last year, and, and everyone would agree that last season, despite the fact that it didn't go so well in the playoffs, won 92 games. That was a top five offense in all of baseball. Blue Jays across the board are off to a better offensive start this season than they were a year ago, including home runs. They have two more home runs through, through uh, 49 games than they did a season ago. I don't know. Does that mean that this, this team is as good as it was a season ago? I mean, offense in baseball overall, isn't that much different. And we know offense does tend to, to go up as the, as the weather starts to heat up across major league baseball. I, I wouldn't count out this blue Jays offense from being again, one of the most elite in major league baseball again, this season. Well, yeah, 20 runs after all, yeah. I would. That's it's right. a bit like when the, uh, the Leafs uh, won that great game four against mm -hmm. Florida, you know, yeah, it's and it meant so problem. much looking back now. It's like, yeah, that's they turn the corner, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's the one uh, tonight though. Obviously it's a big one for the entire team. Let's be honest. You've got to build on this now, but George Springer in particular, was he a double away from the cycle yesterday? Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's played better in fairness in the last couple of games, but you know, a really poor start overall. How big is, is tonight's game for him specifically? Well, yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys that, yeah, you, you look at um, some positive regression because, Okay, it's, it seems like forever ago, but remember opening day of the season, he had a five hit game. He had five hits in the first game of the season and none of them were hit hard. And then he went like a month where he couldn't buy a hit. Right. And now it's all starting to come back uh, around for him. And if you do look under the hood a little bit, like you look at some of the nerd numbers, which I like to look at. Um, I know I don't look like a nerd, but yeah, like I, no, you do actually. Ben. <laughs> okay. Well, I, okay. Your opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I like to, to look at some of the, the nerd stats, like the exit velocity stuff and the batting average on balls and play stuff. 
And George Springer, I mean, I hate to bring up luck, but sports are like there's a luck component to sport. Uh, and you hope over like a long sample of 162 games, things even out and, and you're not talking about it at the end of the season, but certainly it can be part of the discussion as to what's happening. George Springer had been unlucky. He'd hit the ball hard uh, and he didn't have a, a much to, to show for it. Now he's starting to get some of the results. You, you see the OPS back up around 700. This team in large part, you know, like you, you go back and look at the record with him in the lineup and when he's injured and not in the lineup, it's, it's stark, right? Like they, there's a huge contrast within those. Um, he's been healthy all season long, but not producing when he produces at the top of this lineup and you can take some of the pressure off Bo and Vlad. And I guess Matt Chapman trying to insert himself into the equation as one of the most elite hitters in all of baseball. It's a huge, huge deal for this team. I didn't have any questions that, 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 that would return for him because he's not, not aged. What is he? 32, 33. I would hope that that's, that's still in a person's prime. Uh, I, I departed that age years ago, but yeah, no, I, I think there's, there's still plenty more to many good years to come for, for George Springer. And, and I think he'll get back to pretty close to his offensive level this season. You know, Ben, one day uh, we'll go for a beer and you can explain to me what exactly positive regression is because it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Like progression? But, uh... <laughs> you call it... I, I, no, it's positive... Okay. Regression, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a baseball whatever. term. You know, yeah. Baseball doesn't make much sense in many regards. Listen, Ben, we're out of time. Thanks so much, mate. Really enjoyed this. We'll chat again soon. I, I will call you again, I promise. Oh, man. All right, yeah, and I have to say yes, so uh, I will do that. Look forward to that. See you guys. <laughs> 